Backcountry skiing means risk, and how much risk you take is up to you. It's all about a choice that you have to make for yourself. The choice between having great downhill turns or avoiding any avalanche danger. One of the best tools I've found for making a good choice about going into the backcountry is the Utah Avalanche Center's Morning Avalanche Advisory. It's a document that gets emailed right to your computer each morning, and I thought it'd be interesting to find out what it takes to put together this forecast. So I got myself connected with Bruce Tremper of the Avalanche Center, and before you know it, we were loading up his car, and we were headed up Big Cottonwood Canyon to do some snowpack analysis. Make sure it's within. Even on our way up the ridge, it was clear Bruce wasn't going to miss any opportunity to gather information about the snowpack. Field work is really, really important to our job to get out and look at it personally. You know, you, you can't forecast avalanches from the office. He even dug an impromptu snow pit while I was resting. But to do the tests he wanted to, we had to go farther up the ridge and dig a full snow pit. And nobody digs like Bruce Tremper. <laughs> Slice some bread here, isolate some columns, make a little miniature avalanche paths here, and I'll put my shovel on top, and I'll just do it ten times here from the wrist, and then go from the elbow, and then from the whole shoulder. So this particular column is pretty solid right there. So we I expected it to break out a little bit easier than that, but you never know because it will vary a lot from one place to the other. There, it broke out on kind of medium elbow taps. The test that I really like is what I call an extended column test. So I'll cut this one a meter wide this way. And then I'll take my snow saw and mount it on the end of my ski pole. So now I'll make a vertical cut. So this thing is, you know, it's a meter wide this way and 30 centimeters from one side to the other. So, and I'm going all the way to the ground. I have to make sure I'm kind of parallel to the front face of the. And you see this top wind slab is breaking off like we knew it would. <laughs> but I'm worried about those other layers down below. So I'm gonna see if this thing will propagate a fracture. You need to make an avalanche, you need to initiate a fracture and propagate a fracture. So if I initiate it below the shovel, and you know, it propagates all the way across the column, then that's, that tells me something. See right here, I wasn't able to even initiate a fracture. There it goes. So kind of on a hard tap there, I was able to just propagate the whole fracture. Now, the statistics say that as long as you can propagate a fracture, no matter how hard you got to hit on it, you know, you can still probably trigger avalanches on that layer. You should still worry about it. Bruce even went so far as to check the shape of the snow crystals using a monocular and some cross polarizers. The angular crystals are the ones that are more likely to start an avalanche. The next thing I learned was an important choice that Bruce has made for himself about a piece of equipment that he always takes into the backcountry. You can live for about an hour under the snow with these things. Without them, you only have about 15 minutes to live under the snow. So I don't ever, ever go anywhere without my Avalon. These things are essential. And with that, we headed home. But in the car ride on the way down, Bruce gave me one last thing to think about in making my choice about the backcountry. Yeah, driving this road is way more dangerous than avalanches, I think. I'd much rather take my chances with something where I have some control over.